Well, good morning. Welcome to this English lesson about communication. I hope you enjoyed the timer that I had there. I wanted to find a way where I could start my live streams exactly at the moment when I was ready to start them. So, hopefully, that all worked the way it was supposed to. I think it did. Anyways, I'm Bob the Canadian. Welcome to this English lesson about communication. We're going to talk about a wide variety of things this morning when it comes to communication. So, uh, hold tight. That means be patient. Um, a few things before we get started. Please use the chat only to have conversations with each other. Um, please don't use the chat to ask me questions. It just there's usually too many people in the chat and I can't keep up. If you do have a question and it's related to the topic which is communications, please use the link that will be shared in the chat by either Todd or Dave and I think occasionally Nightbot also shares that chat. So, anyways, welcome. Before we get started here, I did wanna mention one thing and that's that Brent, American English with this guy has a video premiering as soon as we're done here and there's a special person in that video, a person that I know fairly well uh, that I've gotten to know over the last little while. So, anyways, I don't wanna give away too much but when we're done here, don't forget to head over to that channel. So, we should get started, shouldn't we? Um again, uh please keep the chat English only as well. Um that just helps all of you practice your English. I do wanna say good morning to a few people. Of course, hi, hi to Todd and Dave. Uh hi to Rodrigo who I know is in the chat. Madi is in the chat. Lolly, Rachel Ting is here. Um Sam the Taiwanese. I think once I start mentioning names, I feel bad because I might forget somebody but thank you to everyone for being here. Let's get started with this English lesson about communication. So, I went way back to start this lesson and I went to the word marathon. So, the marathon is uh, an event at the Olympic Games where people run a little over 26 miles. Um I'm not sure what that is in kilometers but the marathon is a very long uh race. It's a long distance race um and the history of the marathon is that it was a run that someone named Philippides. Now, I apologize to Athanasios uh if I say this wrong um but he ran from the battle of Marathon to Athens to report that they had won the battle. Hopefully, I have my history correct but that is one example of how messages used to be delivered, how communication used to happen. Um if you wanted to send a message to someone far away, you literally had to go and give the message to them or send another person. So, anyways, I have never run a marathon. Um I find the marathon intimidating. When something's intimidating, it means that you're just scared to even try it. Um I have in my life run in short races like five kilometer races but I don't think I could ever run a marathon. Um after that, people used carrier pigeons for a little while. So, you would put your message on the leg of the bird of the pigeon and the pigeon would fly somewhere and deliver that message. So, just a couple older methods. Um there was also when people wanted to communicate from one ship to another, they developed a system where they could use flags. I believe it's called semaphore and they would use flags to communicate. I think this is the letter B but I'm not 100% sure. Um but anyways, just a few of the older ways and then eventually, we invented mail. Um so, mail is something that has been quite common for a very long time on this planet. Um I remember when I was a kid because my parents came from Holland, we would occasionally get mail from people in Holland because my mom and dad had relatives there. And I remember sometimes my mom would send a letter to her friends and family in Holland. So, she would go and she would get a stamp and she would get a special stamp so the uh that so that it could go airmail uh and she would send a letter. And I do remember that as a kid, it was always cool to receive a letter from people from Europe from another country. So, notice in there, I was using two phrases, right? You send a letter or you can receive a letter. Um we also say that you put a letter in the mail, okay? So, if someone said, um hey, I'll send you a birthday card. I'll put it in the mail or I'll put that card in the mail. So, you can say that you send it or that you put it in the mail. I do wanna say thank you to Neymar Vargas for becoming a member. Thank you so much, Neymar, uh for deciding to help support my channel. That's very awesome of you. Um so, I did use a couple of words in there. Um one is stamp or postage stamp. 
So, in order to send something in the mail, if you want to send a letter, you need to buy a postage stamp. We just say stamp and you need to put a stamp on the envelope. Uh so, that's one of the first things you need to do. Um and then you do need an envelope. So, bear with me here because I say this word two ways. Sometimes I say envelope and sometimes I say envelope. Okay. I'm not sure which is the American pronunciation and which is the British pronunciation but I could very well say to Jen, I'm gonna go buy some envelopes today or I could say, I'm gonna go buy some envelopes today. So, sorry about that. Sometimes in Canada, we have more than one way to pronounce something. So, hey, I do wanna just pause and say hi to everyone who is here. Um I do want to just take a moment uh to verify that things are working. Give me a sec here. Sounds like everything is working great. So, that is awesome. Um just let me click to where I'm supposed to be here. Um and I do wanna say again, a uh, shout out to Brent from American English with this guy and just again, I noticed on Brent's channel at nine o'clock my time. So, when this live stream is done, he has a premiere of a video and that video has a special guest in it. So, if you have not checked out American English with this guy's channel, YouTube channel, you should. Uh, and maybe go and watch that video as soon as we're done here because I think you'll enjoy it. Uh thank you to Procore uh Marchenko for becoming a member. Awesome. Thank you for uh deciding to join and support my channel. That is awesome of you Procore. Thank you very very much. So, yes, uh we only say stamp one way but we say envelope or envelope. Um and I don't wanna go into the third pronunciation because there is another one which has a different meaning. Um at some point, they invented something called the telegram. Um I'm not super familiar with the telegram um but they invented the telegram and you could send a short message to someone using the a telegram. Um so, a telegraph operator would send the message and the message itself is called a telegram. Um let me just check one other thing here for a moment. Okay, there we go. Um and they would send the telegram using Morse code. So, Morse code is when you send a series of dots and dashes and I think it sounds like this. Beep 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 beep. That's my impression of Morse code but we have moved pretty far away from a lot of these types of things. I'm trying to go through the history of communication quickly because I think it's a little bit boring but you probably don't. You're probably enjoying this a lot. Let's see here. Um eventually too, they invented shortwave radio. So, shortwave radio allowed for wireless communication. So, people were able to communicate. Oh, we have a fly. We have a fly at the live stream. I have not had a fly in the live stream since I used to do these at school. So, I, maybe it's the same fly. Um the fly used to have a name but I can't remember uh what that name was. So, shortwave radio allowed people on one side of the Atlantic Ocean to begin communicate with communicating with people on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean. Um and then eventually, we had the telephone. To me, the telephone is the first type of communication that I remember in my life. As a child, I remember that we had a telephone. My mom and dad would make phone calls. So, when you use a telephone, you say you're going to make a phone call. Oh, I need to make a phone call today. Um you can also say that you're going to phone someone. Uh often in English, we take a noun and if it's a new item, we change it into a verb. So, in the case of the telephone, we did that. You could say, I need to telephone someone but we kind of shortened it and now we say, I need to phone someone or you can say, um did Joe phone today? Um and that's how you would say it. We also refer to the communication by phone as a phone call. So, you could say, I need to make a phone call or you could say, I need to phone someone. So, um and then just the word call as well, right? I need to call someone usually refers to using the phone. It's not like, hey, Joe. So, that's not what we mean when we say that we need to call someone. Uh we usually are talking about making a phone call. Um hey, I'm gonna jump over uh to the questions for a moment. So, give me a second here to find uh the first question. It'll just take a minute. Um let me see here. First question is from Eugene from Kharkov. Good morning, Mr. Bob. I hope you're having a good day. I am actually having a good day. My question is, 
Which way of communication is the most popular in Canada? Thank you so much for the great lesson. So, your question is completely correct. I would probably choose the word method instead of way though. I would say which method of communication is the most popular in Canada? I think the most popular method is this and we'll get to it in a moment. The smartphone either via texting uh, or email or now with um video chat. Those are probably the three most popular uh ways of communicating right now in Canada. I should use the word method, shouldn't I? Those are three of the most popular methods of communicating right now in Canada. Uh let's see here. Next question um is from Modine. Hi, Mr. Bob. Would you rather written or verbal communication and do you think it is more important to be a good listener or a good communicator as a language learner? Thanks a lot. So, First of all, I prefer written communication. Um I don't always enjoy having conversations with people. Um I don't know why. I don't like large groups of people. I don't mind talking to people one on one. Uh and I would say both are very important as a language learner. You need to be a good listener. You need to listen actively so you can hear new words and memorize them and I think you need to be a good communicator as well. You need to speak clearly as well. Uh let's get to the no next question. Um Rod VIP IDP. Hi Rod by the way. Uh good morning Mr. Bob. How are you today? I'm doing quite good. What's the biggest communication advent in your opinion ever or so far? Thanks so much. I think the internet. Um I think along the way every step we have invented things that have changed the world like the telephone changed the world but I think the internet And everything that you can do with the internet as a method of communication or as a way of communication uh, has changed the world the most. Uh, As I was mentioning earlier in the chat, when I was a kid, I had a friend who only lived 30 kilometers away but I could not phone my friend because it was called long distance and it would have cost money. Now, Rod VIP and I talk Friday afternoons for half an hour and it costs nothing and he lives in Brazil. So, I think the internet has created some uh remarkable new ways to do things. Hey, I wanna thank uh, Dimitri for the super chat. Uh says, hello everybody, Mr. Bob. Thank you for your videos and stream. These are very useful for studying English. Well, you are very welcome, uh Dimitri. Thank you so much for the super chat. Let's see here. Um so, Brahim says, hi, teacher Bob from Morocco. Is communication related only to speech? Or we can also talk with essays and written thanks for responding. So, in this lesson, I'm actually gonna talk about um methods of communication but also ways of communicating to people verbally as well as written. So, for instance, uh you would say sending someone a letter is written communication. Sending someone an email is written communication. Talking on the phone would be considered oral communication. Um and so, yes, any way that Um, you can think of where you are interacting with someone, we would certainly call that uh communication. Um let me see. I'm clicking the wrong links here. Let's do one more question. Um this is from S.L. Lenka. As I can remember, people used telegraph for communication before telephone were invented or before the telephone was invented. Bob, are you familiar with this technology? Thanks for your lesson. Well, that's a great question because we're gonna go right back to where were we? Telegram which was sent via telegraph, Morse code, shortwave and telephone. So, there's a couple different kinds of telephones. When your phone is this old fashioned kind, we call it a landline. We call it a landline because the phone has a wire and that wire goes into the wall and eventually into the ground and sometimes you refer to a phone as being connected to the phone lines. So, a landline would simply not be a smartphone. A landline is connected to a wire. Actually, a few years ago in my part of Canada, many people started to get rid of their landlines because their smartphone replaced how they communicated when they needed to make a phone call. So, um they got rid of their landlines. We still have a landline and I also have my cell phone. Um let's see here. Um Khaled says, guys, is there any sound problem? And then Brent says, the sound is, the audio is perfect for me. I thought the audio was working really good. 
Yeah, it sounds pretty good to me, Khaled. So hopefully you can figure out what's happening there. Um, and then of course, we got these. So this is what I would call a smartphone. We used to call it a cellular phone or a cell phone. We call it a mobile phone or a mobile phone depending on where you are. Um, but this is now um, probably the most common way to communicate. And if you're wondering, I have a Pixel 3. I have a Google Pixel 3 is the type of phone I have. Um, earlier, uh, Rod asked about what has changed the world of communications the most or what method of communicating has changed things the most. I think the internet and then now the smartphone and those two together because the smartphone needs the internet have probably changed how we communicate with each other the most. Um if I'm at work and I need to get groceries, I will text Jen. This is how I text with my thumbs uh to ask if there's anything that I need. Um let's see here. Javier says, hi, Bob. Could you please remove the mic from the screen? It looks like a dead mouse. (laughs) Yeah, sorry about that. Um but I do need it as close as I can have it to me and uh here, I'll show you what it looks like. So, this is what it looks like. Um I guess I don't need the wind protector on right now but I'm gonna leave it there. So, sorry. I I want the audio to be really good. Um we had fax machines for a while. In fact, at my school, we still have a fax machine. A fax machine is something where you put a piece of paper in and it scans the piece of paper and it sends it to another fax machine and a copy of it comes out. What we would call a facsimile. So, the English word facsimile means a copy of something. Um so, yes, a fax machine was quite popular for a while. Probably for almost 20 years. Um and you'll see again, we took the word fax and we turned it into a verb. So, I would fax something to someone. So, if someone needed a copy of something, I could say, oh, I'll fax it to you and I would take what I needed to send them, the piece of paper. I would punch in their fax number and I would stick it in the fax machine and it would go through and then I would basically say, yes, I faxed it to you earlier today or did you get the fax? I faxed it to you earlier today. So, that's just another example of how we name something and then we take the noun and we can sometimes create a verb out of it. We often do that with new technology. Um and then we have email. Uh email came along uh when I was young. I remember my first email address, how excited I was. I could email my friends. I was at university at the time and so I could email my friends and they could email me back. Notice again, I got email. I got an email account. I got an email address and I was able to email my friends. So, that's how you would talk about, oh, can you send me an email? I did send you an email. I emailed you yesterday. So, notice how I'm flipping the word email in and out as a noun and a verb. Um let me just check one thing for a moment. I just wanna say hi to the 462 people. That's crazy. 462 people who are watching. Thank you so much for being here. If you're new here, don't forget there is a subscribe button right there. You should click it uh, and give me a thumbs up if this video is helping you learn a bit of English. Let's keep moving along though. Um We also text people. So, in some countries, you'll call this an SMS. Like, send me an SMS. In my part of Canada, we just call it texting. So, people will text each other. They will send each other a text or a text message. So, the other day, I sent a text to Dave the Canadian and Dave the Canadian texted me back, okay? Um I could say I sent him a text message and I could say he texted me back. Um but generally, we just use the word text. So, the other day, I texted Dave the Canadian and he texted me back. Later, I'm going to text Dave the text Dave the Canadian again. Um so, that's how we talk about that. Um we do sometimes say SMS but it's not as common. We just say text and most people um when they text, they use their thumbs but some people now use swipe on their keyboard. Um and now, something that wasn't as popular four or five months ago was fairly widespread in usage but now is very common because of COVID is the use of video calling, video calls or video chat. There's a number of ways to refer to it um but generally, what we've done is this. We have a piece of software called Skype and you can use Skype to talk with someone online and we've turned the word Skype also into a verb. So, later today, I'm going to Skype Rod VIP, okay? Sounds kind of funny but I'm going to have a Skype call with him 
and I can use it as a verb. We haven't done this with Zoom. Generally with Zoom, we just say, oh, I'm gonna meet with someone via Zoom or I'm going to have a Zoom meeting with someone later today but Skype has become a verb and so has FaceTime. Like, oh, I'm gonna FaceTime my cousin later today or I'm going to FaceTime my mom on Sunday to see how she's doing. FaceTime again is another way to do a video call uh, or to do video chat. So, let's see here. Um, let's see here. I'm just gonna check the chat for a sec. A few things going on there. Uh, and then just a few extra things that I want to make sure I talk about. Um, none of this would be possible. We wouldn't be able to have a world where everyone can communicate easily without two things. Number one is satellites. So, a satellite is something that they put in orbit around the earth. If you are a really scientific person, it's usually called a geosynchronous orbit. That means the satellite's in the same place in the sky all the time. Um, I think that's what it means. (laughs) I'm not a science teacher. Um, but satellites uh, have been launched for years now, for decades. And when they put a satellite in space, it allows for communication to happen more easily between people in different countries. It also allows for things like television and internet to work as well. Um, for sure. Um, so, satellites, I think Russia put the first satellite in space or the USSR. Uh, I can't remember. Sputnik. Uh, Natalie, Natalia's here. Maybe Natalia knows her uh, her history there. But uh, satellites are a critical part of our worldwide communication and undersea cables. I did not realize this till I was researching it last night but there are hundreds of undersea cables, long wires or cables that go from one continent to another. If you look on Google and do a search for a map of undersea cables, there are so many cables between North America and Europe, between North America and uh, Asia. Uh, There are just lots of undersea cables in the world. So, it's just incredible to me that we have uh, that much infrastructure um, for communication. So, undersea cables, really, really cool. Uh, Let me just check one thing here. Excellent. Okay. Um, I just have to see where I am in the lesson. I'm gonna switch over and do a few questions uh and when I get back uh we will talk about uh nonverbal communication. So, let's uh uh wait for that. Uh let me see here. Uh next question is not related to communication. So, I'm gonna skip it. Let me get to the next question. Uh let's see. This is a little bit about communication. So, let's go with this. Alice says, hey teacher Bob, What is your favorite social media to share your insights, your life and so on? So, I like YouTube and I in particular like live streaming doing what I'm doing right now. I really like making English lessons in video form but I think the live streams are one of my favorite things to do. It's nice to see the chat. It's nice to interact a little bit with people and it's nice to be able to answer questions. So, I would say that is my favorite uh, of all of them. Um, I'm not sure. I'll put the next one up. Um, I don't know Salah Abid exactly which part of the lesson you're referring to but was it in Canada when you were a child? Let me just describe my life in terms of communication. When I was young, we had a telephone and then eventually we got a computer and eventually we could connect the computer to the internet via the telephone. Um, so, that's what was around when I was a kid. Um, and then things like fax machines and that as well. Um, I think I got my first um cell phone when I was about 20 years old. Um, and then since then, I've just been getting a new phone every couple of years like most of us do. Um, again, uh, I am going to skip questions that are not related (laughs) to communication but here's a hot topic question. Uh, when something's a hot topic, it means it could cause people to argue in the chat. Renata M. Kobata says, good morning, Bob. I don't know if this has anything to do with today's topic but do you prefer iPhone or Android? Have a great day, sir. So, here's how it goes. There are products made by Apple that uh products like the iPhone and then there are products made by several other companies which run Android. So, you can buy uh an Apple phone like an iPhone or you can buy an Android phone and Renata is asking 
uh, which do I prefer? So, I have had several Mac products. I have actually have a MacBook um but I have never had an iPhone. I have always had an Android phone. That doesn't mean it's the best. I don't wanna start a big fight between people but when it comes to my daily communication, um my Android phone, my Google Pixel 3 uh is my go-to phone. I will probably replace it with a Google Pixel 4 or 5 when it comes out someday um but not right now. So, I know this can cause some controversy in the chat. People might start fighting with each other and arguing right now um but I definitely like Android. When it comes to computers, I own both though. I have a uh, a MacBook Air and I also have a PC. So, let's see here. Um th- so, I didn't mention this one but Havaz Abu Tamam says, in the past, people used to communicate by setting fires on the hill. So, there's something called a signal fire and they uh, a long time ago, you may have had watchtowers on really high hills and if they needed to warn somebody back at the main village or main place where people live it, were, were living, they might have lit a signal fire. So, I didn't cover that one but it's quite possible. Um I like Brent's putting fists in the chat. Um I did my boxing impression in today's video uh on my other channel today but anyways, <laughs> let me get back to the lesson before I get off track. Next question is from Abbas Azaki. Hi, Bob. I want to know how many languages are spoken in Canada. Thanks in advance. So, two main languages um but I do have to say that our First Nations people also have their original languages as well. Um so, I'm not sure um besides English and French, I'm not sure exactly how many languages are spoken in Canada. You need to remember as well when people immigrate to Canada, um they often live in a community with other people who speak the same language as them. So, in the um in the larger cities like Toronto, there are areas where a lot of people who have moved here from China speak English but also still speak some Chinese or speak Chinese. So, the official languages are English and French and then we have our indigenous or our first nations languages as well uh and then a lot of languages are spoken um not as official languages but in addition to that. So, but two main ones um Abbas. Let's see here. Um Enya Danadai. Danadai. Hi, Bob. Good morning. What do you think about accents? Do you think it is a problem during communication? Thank you. Have a nice day. So, I think you need to practice reducing your accent to a certain extent but I wouldn't get too worried about it. I think that as long as you can pronounce the words clearly and in a way where people understand it, I wouldn't get too worried about having an accent. When I speak French, I have a horrible accent because I'm a native English speaker but I can make myself clear and I think that's more important than trying to get rid of your accent completely. I think clear pronunciation, uh articulating your words properly um and then if you still have a slight accent or even a quite a strong accent, I wouldn't be too worried about it, okay? Uh let's see here. Uh next question is from Procore. Hello, teacher Bob from Barcelona. Want to ask you what's the most popular app to communicate in Canada? Do you use WhatsApp or you prefer other apps? Most people just use the messaging app on their phone. Um n- people in Canada do use WhatsApp a little bit. Um I know some of my students use WeChat. I know some students use other apps as well. Um but in terms of texting for people my age, the most popular app is just whatever messaging app comes on your phone. Okay, let's get back to the lesson uh for just a moment and then we will go into members only chat in just a little bit. So, let's talk about nonverbal communication. So, you can communicate by speaking, you can communicate by writing but humans also communicate without using words and I'm just gonna go over a few of those methods in a moment. Um the first one would be body language. You can see this guy. You don't have to hear him to know that he is excited. So, he is expressing using body language. When you use body language, you communicate non-verbally how you're feeling. So, if I was like this, you might think I look skeptical. If I was like, you might think I look 
scared. I, I don't have a lot of good facial expression. If I smile, you know that I'm happy. Um, but I was sorry. I was trying to do body language. We'll get to facial expressions in a moment. Um, but body language is when the way you stand or how you put your arms or what you do with your body communicate something. This can be a challenge because culturally different ways of standing and putting your body can mean different things to people. Uh so for instance in in my part of the world if you stand like this with your arms folded it can kind of mean that you're uptight like you can see my shoulders are up a little bit and my arms are folded whereas if I'm like this I might look thoughtful. So body language can communicate quite a bit. Um we also have facial expressions. So if someone did something they shouldn't, I might go, oh, and you might see that I look surprised, right? Um, I'm gonna try and look scared. If, if, if Jen hid behind a tree at night and I walked by and she jumped out and said, boo, I might go, so I might look scared. Um, I'm, I can look angry. This, this is my angry face. <laughs> but facial expressions, and now we can talk about smiling. Um, facial expressions are nonverbal. And they can communicate how you are feeling to someone. Um hopefully, I didn't put a football picture up that made people fight in the chat. Um we also have hand gestures. So, you have good hand gestures. Um you can use hand gest- you can point. Now, pointing can be considered rude sometimes if you point at people. But if I said, um can you bring me that cup of coffee? Um or I'll have that. You can use your fingers to point. You can do thumbs up. Um if you're at a rock concert, um I forget. I think you do something like this but I don't know if that's a good uh, I think that was hidden behind the thing. You couldn't quite see it. I should point this way, shouldn't I? There, I point like that. Um there is also, I'll show you. This is a really bad one. I'm not gonna show you what it is but in uh my part of the world, if you put your hand up like this and you raise just your middle finger, it means something really bad. It basically means you want the person just to get lost but in a really rude way. So, hand gestures are another way uh, of communicating. Um and there are many of them and sometimes they change over time. Um but right now, thumbs up is familiar to most people in the world because we use this online. Like, hey, please give this video a thumbs up. I don't know why we don't say thumb up. So, that's a weird one. There's only one thumb but we say, hey, give this video a thumbs up or thumbs up, man, but there's only one thumb. But you don't say thumb up. You wouldn't ever say, oh, I gave his video a thumb up. This doesn't sound right. You say, oh, I gave him a thumbs up. By the way, if you give me a thumbs up, that makes me happy. It's a facial expression. Also, you can subscribe. It makes you happy. Another facial expression. We also have touch. So, we communicate through touch. One of the ways we show love or affection for other people is we will give them a hug. Um and so, there are many different ways Uh, that you can communicate non-verbally. Hey, I'm gonna flip to questions again but I'm also, if you just give me a moment, I want to switch our chat to members only. Let me get that going. Should be on now. So, we are going into about 10 minutes of members only chat. Um I do this to thank all of you who have become members to support my channel. There is a button below where you can join and become a member of the channel. Uh you get a few perks. One is that you get to participate in members only chat while I'm doing the lesson. I'm going to look at a few questions uh while the members only chat is on and uh if you have a question and you are a member, please ask it. So, I see a lot of thumbs up in the chat um and then Procure is using the okay sign which actually is controversial right now and I don't wanna make the okay sign on the screen um because it has, it now kind of has some racial overtones to it. Um so, the okay sign um which used to be quite popular is now changing, the meaning of it is changing a little bit. So, I won't use that one. Um certainly, the peace sign is still okay but if you turn this around and you're in a different country than Canada, it means something bad. So, (laughs) don't do that but P- this means peace. Um this means thumbs up. Okay, anyways, we says, good morning, teacher Bob. When do you first, when did you first use your smartphone? 
I think I got my first, this is my third smartphone in life and I replace my phones about every three years. So, probably about only 10 years ago. I, I don't know when the first smartphone came out but I bought one of the first one. Once. Let's see here. Sam says, hi teacher Bob. Have you ever sent any love letters to Jen? Yes. I'm not. That's it. That's all I'm gonna say. Um yes, Sam. I have sent love letters to Jen. Julia is practicing uh her um express gestures. Uh Annette says, hi Bob. Do you think that using a mask will change the communication between them a lot and how can we compensate for this situation? Yes. I went shopping yesterday and I had my mask on and I had to talk to the person in the camera store with um he had a mask on too. It it's very different. I don't know how we can make it better but it's certainly different and it changes the experience because you can't see the facial expressions. It's 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 certainly interesting. Uh Lolly Lolly says your accent when you speak French is not horrible. It's cute and I understand you very well, Bob. Thanks, Lolly. Uh merci beaucoup. Uh that's very nice of you. Uh Brent from American English with this guy says the extra video a week is a nice perk of being a channel member too. Yes, you do get an extra video on Wednesdays. It's uh it's a fun one to make and I think it's enjoyable sometimes. By the way, uh Brent, American English with this guy. I do wanna give a shout out again. He is doing a premiere when this live stream is done over on his channel and he has a special guest today. I highly recommend you go watch that. Uh let's see here. Samuel Chen. Hi, teacher Bob. Wish you have a great summer day. Do you think working from home sometimes blurs the boundary of working and personal life? The video calls and emails. Yes, I 100% think it does do that. When I go to work, I get in my van. I go to work. I'm at work. When I come home, I'm done. Okay, that was really nice. For the last four months, work and personal life have blended. Like I get up in the morning and I do my some work and then I have breakfast and then I do some work again and then I read a book but then I'm back at work and then at night, I do some work again. It's not fun, Samuel. I I'm really looking forward to going back to work. Uh, let's see here. Um Brent says, I think the okay sign is also a sign for a body part in some countries. Yes. So, Let's uh, let's just agree that you should research your hand gestures before they you use them especially if you're being photographed or in a video. Um let's see here. Christopher. Hi, teacher Bob. What is the best internet service provider in Canada? That depends. Um in some cities, it would be Rogers. In some cities, it would be Kojiko. Um there's a number of different companies. All of them though are fairly good. Let's see here. Um teaching with a mask will make for an interesting school year. Yes. So, Brent, I'm pretty sure is going back to school in September to teach. I'm going back to teach. I need to wear a mask every day. Students will be sitting two meters apart. We are only having school though Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. We're actually learning from home on Wednesdays. So, that should be interesting. Um let's see here. Christopher, I subscribe to this guy. (laughs) Thank you very much. Rod VIP, Bob, Mr. Bob, if you had to choose another way of communication besides the internet, which one would you pick? Oh, that's interesting. I do like letters, like old fashioned handwritten letters. Um I don't send any right now but they have a certain appeal to me. Um there's I think I have a little bit of nostalgia. Nostalgia is when you think about the past in a way that makes you happy. Uh Javier has given me a super sticker. Thank you so much, Javier Visbal for the sticker. That is awesome of you. Uh thank you very much. Julia Olis, I feel weird when I have to put on a mask entering the bank. Yeah. So, um I saw a picture on the internet um that was maybe from a bank where it said, you may wear this mask and then it showed the normal mask but you may not wear this mask and that had a person with a ski mask, you know, the kind of mask that a bank robber would wear. So, yeah, certainly very interesting. Um next question is from Park from Beijing. Hello, Bob. I'm in Beijing, China and my daughter is in Ohio, United States. So, communication is extremely important for us. We make a video call once a week. That's my happiest time. So, video calling like using Skype and FaceTime and Zoom and Google Meet or Google Hangouts has really made it a little nicer for people when their kids study in another country. Um Or let's say you are older and you have children who are married and they are having children themselves. So, you have grandkids. I know at work, 
I have a few older colleagues who often will FaceTime or Skype with their children who live in another part of Canada so they can see their grandchildren. So, uh certainly it's very, very cool. Um Brent from American English with this guy says, we had the same plan for school. Two groups of students being during the week. Wednesday remote. School board changed it. Wednesday, we are scrambling. Oh, yeah. So, nothing is written in stone at this point. So, that's an English expression that's very appropriate right now for Brent and I. My school has a plan for starting school September 8th. Brent's school has a plan for starting school. Um but when you say nothing's written in stone, it means that plans could change at any minute. So, I know the plan but when I say it's not written in stone, it means that you know on Monday, I could be in a meeting and they could say, okay, plans are completely different. So, when something is written in stone, it's permanent. Um let's see here. Um let me get to the next question here. Bob, personal question. Have you ever written articles or books to convey your thoughts to people? So, I have written articles about teaching. One or two that were in a teaching magazine. That's really about it. Personally, I do some writing from time to time. Um but what I would love to do and I don't know if anyone would want this. I would love to write a book of stories where every story is designed to teach an English concept for English learners. Um I don't know if I'll ever do that. I would need lots of time to do that but I just thought that would be something fun to do someday. Um let me see here. Uh Rod VIP, I used to write lots of letters while growing up. Uh it would take ages to reach its destination. Yes. What about when I got a return to sender stamp? It was frustrating. Yes. So, sometimes when you sent something in the mail, if the address was wrong or if the people didn't live there anymore, they would you would get the letter back and it would say return to sender. Not very nice. Not a good feeling. Uh Wasim saying, hi Bob, sir. Good evening. Listening to you, it helps me to improve my English. Thanks, sir. I have been watching you for about four months. Thank you very much, Wasim, for those kind words. Uh I appreciate it. I it is nice to know that what I do is helping people. So, thank you for letting me know. Uh let's see here. Um Athanasios GR or Nathan says, hi teacher Bob. How are you? Is it wrong if we use the term analog phone? Thanks. So, it's scientifically correct but we don't use the term analog phone very much anymore. Um the word analog in fact has kind of disappeared a little bit because so many things are digital now that some people don't even know what analog means. And for those of you that don't know, um computers are digital but a long time ago, everything was analog. So, the old, old, old telephone would have been analog but no, we don't hardly use that word at all anymore. It's a little bit uh it's funny, eh? How words uh fade from usage. Uh Talk Italian with Arone says, have you ever had a rotary phone in the past? Ciao, Bob. Yes. When I was a kid, you would pick up the phone and you would you would go that's the sound it made. I'm I'm serious. That's the sound I remember. So, yes, very much uh I did definitely have a rotary phone. Hey folks, just give me a sec here. I'm going to um forget how to turn off chat. One moment. There we go. So, we're gonna go back to um chat for everybody right now. I do want to say for a moment, thank you to the 566 people who are watching. It's so fun for me to know that the work I put in to create the lesson is well received. It's nice to see people come and watch and I'm happy to help you uh learn English. So, if you're new, hit subscribe and then you know what this just down here, there's there's a little mini one somewhere down there. I don't know exactly where. If you click it, it makes me happy. Um should we get back to the lesson? Yes, we should get back to the lesson. We were on touch. So, we have things like hugging, kissing, um handshakes. So, uh, a handshake is a nonverbal gesture of touch. That means that you agree. Um we're not sure what is going to happen with the handshake though because right now, handshakes are not good but usually uh in a lot of business deals, you will end the deal with signing a contract and people will still shake hands. Often as well, for greeting people, you will shake hands like, oh, hello, how are you? And you will shake their hand. Um and even things like 
when you congratulate someone, you will often shake their hands. Uh and at moments when uh someone has a loved one who has passed away, you will often to console someone to make them feel better, you will give them a hug or you will shake their hand and give your condolences. So, uh definitely we have a lot of ways that we communicate non-verbally through touch. Let me just see where I am here. Yes. So, we're gonna talk about a few other things related to conversation and communication. One is eye contact and this is very cultural as well. Uh in North America, it's considered polite when you talk to someone to look them in the eye. Um if you talk to someone like this the whole time, it's it's not rude but it is quite common like when I'm teaching in my classroom and if I say to a student, uh Joe, are you done your homework? I'm expecting Joe will look at me and make eye contact while he is responding. So, eye contact is a form of nonverbal communication that we use when communicating verbally and it's very important to make eye contact. You'll notice I make eye contact with the camera a lot. If I was to teach my lesson like this, if I was to say, okay, the next the next thing is face to face. Um it gives you a different experience. When I look at the camera, it's easier to connect with what I'm saying. So, anyways, let we should move on to the next one though. Face to face. So, sometimes when you communicate with someone, you talk to them on the phone. Remember, this is my phone. If I had a banana, I could use that as a phone. You talk to them on the phone but sometimes it's nice to actually meet face to face. When you meet face to face, it means you see the person and you are in the same place as them. So, I could say, hey, we're trying to make this business deal over the phone. It's not going well. Let's meet face to face. Can we have a meeting tomorrow? We'll meet face to face. Sometimes when you meet someone face to face, it's easier to read their body language and their facial expressions and so, you can build trust and understand them better. That's why I always recommend if you are learning English, you should meet with a tutor on Skype or FaceTime because you can see their facial expressions. Meeting with a native English speaker as a tutor in person face to face is even better. I think I just used my next word or phrase. When you meet someone in person, it means the same thing almost as face to face. I could say, it's nice to see all of you in the chat. It would be nice to meet some of you in person someday. For instance, I would like to meet Brent from American English with this guy in person someday. Um Brent and I have sent emails back and forth and we've shared little video clips but I have never met met Brent in person. So, it would be really nice when COVID's over and when I'm less busy, um Brent doesn't live that far away from me. It would be really nice to meet in person, have a coffee, and just talk about what it's like to make videos on YouTube. So, sometimes you meet people in person. Sometimes though, you want to meet in private. So, let's say you're at work and you did something wrong and your boss is angry. Your boss might say to you, um, I need to talk to you about something. Can you come to my office? I need to talk to you in private. What that means is one, you're probably in trouble (laughs) and two, whatever is going to be talked about is confidential, okay? So, sometimes you want to talk to someone. The opposite would be in public, okay? Sometimes you meet someone in public. Um you meet someone at a public place. If you're at a mall, you're in public um but sometimes people will want to talk to you in private. So, slightly different way of talking. Let me just check where I am here. Good. Um I'm gonna talk about a couple levels of communicating now. Um so, one way that you can talk whisper. I'm not sure you guys can hear me now. Um I'll go closer to the mic but sometimes say something quietly. Sometimes you just wanna say something quietly and so, you will whisper to someone. Um when you whisper, you speak in a really quiet voice like I just did uh and you do that so that other people can't hear what you say. You will often whisper in someone's ear. So, if Jen and I are sitting in a movie theater and the movie has started and I want to tell Jen something, I will lean over and I'll whisper in her ear. I'll say, did you turn, did you turn the oven off? 
<laughs> that's a, a common thing that we think about after we cook a meal. Sometimes we forget to turn the oven off. So, it would be quite common for us to be at a movie theater uh to be half an hour into the movie and for Jen to whisper to me uh or me to whisper to Jen something like that like, did you remember to turn the oven off? No. Oh, no. Can you text one of the kids and tell them to turn the oven off? So, basically, that is whispering. Sorry, I was having some fun there. I don't know why that that was making me uh I was enjoying that. Um, let me get to the next. Uh, you can also yell, shout, or raise your voice. I'm not going to do that here. But if I was angry with someone, I would say, hey, stop running in the hallway. Okay. I would probably yell louder than that. So, yelling at someone, shouting at someone, or raising your voice are all very similar. Um, in fact, sometimes when children yell or shout at their parents, the parent might say, hey, don't raise your voice to me. Speak calmly, okay? Don't raise your voice at me. Don't raise your voice. I think we would just say don't raise your voice. Um, tricky. Sometimes the English speaker doesn't know <laughs> the right phrase. Um, let me see here. And then we have, you can scream. So, there's a number of different kinds of screaming. If you are scared or terrified, you might scream, okay? So, when you um Again, if Jen jumped out from behind a tree and said boo in the dark, I might scream like ah. Sorry, I don't scream very good. Um, you can also scream. The best example I can think of is on a roller coaster. When the roller coaster starts to go down, people often scream not because they're scared. Some of them might be scared. Some are excited. So, there's a number of different kinds of screaming. Um, Sometimes when people talk, they mumble a little bit and you can't understand what they're saying. So, that was an example. I'll do one again. Don't don't stop watching but So, if I talked like that, I wouldn't have a very successful YouTube channel if I mumbled all the time, okay? So, when you mumble, um it's when you don't speak clearly. Uh let's see here. Um in the chat, I see Nohaila Alui says, whisper in classroom between students. Yes, students often whisper to each other like, I can't believe Mr. Garrett. I can't believe he's wearing his shirt again. So, anyways, um let's go on to the next one. Sometimes people slur their words. Often people will slur their words um after they've had too much alcohol. So, they have trouble speaking clearly and they slur their words a little bit. Um so um that's not something that you hear very often um but sometimes you will hear people slur their words. Let me see where I am here. The one thing you want to do is you want to speak clearly as much as possible. So, we have yelling and whispering and mumbling and people sometimes even stutter. That's when they have trouble saying the word. Um people slur their words. People mumble. Uh people uh, stumble over their words. What you really want to do is you want to speak clearly. Um I see someone in the chat saying, Bob, you are a really amazing teacher. Thank you very much for that. That, that is nice. Um <laughs> and Eugene says, Russians hate mumbling Americans because it's pretty hard to understand them. Yes, it would be. Um let me though jump over and I'm gonna do a few questions. We're not quite done the lesson but let me do a few questions and then we will um we will finish this up in about seven minutes. Sasha says, when you started recording video, I subscribed to your channel yesterday. Your channel is useful for learning English. I'm from Ukraine. Well, thank you, Sasha, for that. That is awesome of you. Um I'm going to, the next question isn't about communication. Yes. So, Audrey, Andrew says, hi, Bob. Do you use Viber Messenger or WhatsApp? If yes, do you prefer it to SMS? No. I simply use the text messaging um that's built into Android. That's what I use. Ooh, this is a good one. So, Ali Agai, sorry if I said your name wrong. What do you think about the future of communication in the next 10 years? I think the next thing you'll see in communication is things like Skype and Zoom will become um a little more interactive um in the sense that instead of me just seeing someone's face, if we can develop holograms, a hologram is a 3D 
version of the person, you would actually have that person look like they're standing in the same room as you. So, my hope is that we invent really good technology for holograms and that is the future of uh, technology for us. We'll see. Uh, let's see here. Um, this isn't totally about communication but Ka Ka Sudari. Hey, Bob, would you be kind enough to let me know what does what is the meaning of public domain? When something is in the public domain, it is no longer copyright and you can use it for whatever you want. Really old books are in the public domain. That means you can make a copy of the book and you can use the book without paying. Most books though are copyrighted. That means that the original author owns the book and you must pay to have a copy of the book. So, some things, there can be music that's in the public domain which means it's free to use. Um let's see here. Next question is from Anthony and it's about communication in the future as well. Um let's see here. Alfonso says, hello teacher Bob. My question is this. In Canada, is television or radio used to teach low income people? Um so, we have public television and we have shows like Sesame Street and another number of other kids shows to teach kids. They're not designed specifically for low income people. You need to remember that in Canada, education is free from age five to about age 17 or 18. So, um we have schools in every city, every neighborhood and you can go to school. There is no cost for school. So, in terms of education for low income people, they get the same education as everyone else. Some people may argue that schools in poorer areas aren't as well funded and there that might be true but certainly Alfonso uh in Canada regardless of your income you can go to school for free. Um let's see here. Next question from Annette. How often is sir or madame used in daily conversation? Is it considered overly polite which is unnatural? I have students who call me sir. Excuse me sir. Excuse me sir. They do not call the female teachers madam or ma'am. So, I'm not sure why that is. I think historically a long time ago, um there was not gender equality in teaching uh in high schools. It was mostly male teachers um but now it's interesting. Um I don't hear madam or ma'am very often. I know in the UK, they often instead of ma'am, it sounds more like mum and they use it quite quite regularly. So, in a school situation though, um I am called sir by some students. Like, sir, I have a question, sir. How do you do number seven, sir? Um let's see here. The fly keeps landing on my head. The fly wants to learn how to communicate and thinks that if he sits here, he can see things really good. So, um sorry, kind of lost track here and I feel like I should jump back to the slide. So, a few last things. First of all, there are other ways to communicate besides writing and speaking. One is singing. So, often when someone sings, the song is a kind of message and it's a way of communicating. Um I don't sing very well. <laughs> I can't sing on key. Um but another way to communicate could be through whistling. This is quite common when communicating with a dog. So, if I go like this, Oscar, come here. I'm glad I I was able to whistle. That basically if I'm like (laughs) that whistle means that I want Oscar to come. He's not gonna come because he's outside right now. Um but you can also whistle a song like (laughs) hopefully I don't get a copyright strike. I don't even know what song that was but (laughs) anyways, uh whistling is another way of communicating. My uncle when I worked on a construction site could whistle really loudly um and that would mean come here. Um I guess he thought I was a dog. No, he didn't. But anyways. Um and then there is humming like hmm 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 Um I still don't know what song that is but anyways, you can hum and that is another way of communicating. I wanted to leave with uh two slides just for fun. One is one of the best things to do when you want to communicate clearly is to practice your pronunciation. Again, if you're an older uh person and you're over the age of 10, you are going to have an accent when you speak English but you do wanna work on pronouncing things as clearly as possible. So, you wanna work on your pronunciation. So, uh here is just a little slide to remind you of that. Um one good way to do it is to shadow people. And then, 
Uh, this is the last slide just for fun. Um, sometimes when you are somewhere like in a really big uh, open space uh, or in a big building, if you yell, hello, 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 there is an echo. So, not directly related to communication but I found this picture while I was making this lesson and I thought it would be fun to put it here. So, anyways, everybody, thank you so much for watching. It is awesome that you were here and able to learn a little bit more English, a little bit more about communication. Uh, I hope the lesson worked well for you. I do want to remind you that right now, you should go to American English uh, with this guy's channel because he has a premiere starting now. I think it's starting now. He also has a live stream at 9 30. So, jump over there and see that. Anyways, thanks for watching. Do watch this a little bit again later today or tomorrow with English subtitles on if there were parts you didn't understand. There will be a shorter version of this video available for you. I think Sunday morning my time where I will take out the user questions but thank you so much for being here. I hope that you were able to learn just a little bit more English. Uh, subscribe. If you're not a subscriber, consider joining if you want to support me. Uh, and then a big shout out thanks to Todd and Dave for helping out with this lesson. You guys are awesome. I think next week we're going to do a lesson on university and college and all super chats, everything from the video goes to Dave and Todd's college fund. So, I'll talk about that a bit more next week but uh, thank you to everyone. Thanks to Brent from American English with this guy for being here um, and that's it. I'm gonna hit the end button. It was a good live lesson. I hope that you enjoyed it and learned lots. 